Good morning, good morning, and happy new year, everyone. I brought a sidekick to my coffee chat this morning. Oh, you're gonna throw everything, are you? Hi, everyone. Welcome, happy new year. Hi, Becky. Oh, hi, Deb. Happy new year. Beckett's gonna join us for our coffee chat. He actually loves coffee. He doesn't really drink it, but he loves pretend drinking out of my mugs. Good morning, everyone. We are gonna be on with Elizabeth Foss today. Let me add her real quick. Here we go. Hi, everyone. Happy New Year. Hi, Liz. There she is. Here we are. Happy, Hi. Happy, Hi. New Year. Happy New Year to you. How are you? Hi, Say hi. hi. Oh, he's waving to you. I don't know if you can see his hand back here, but he he's been shyly waving to everyone. He's very shy, but he when we had him in for his last COVID test, the nurse is saying hello to him and he wouldn't look at her, but his hand was going like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You gonna you gonna talk to us today, Beckett? Oh, I'm so happy to see your face. I'm so happy to have you here. I want to take a moment and introduce you to my followers. Many of my followers are your followers and um, know you well because we've spent so much of 2020 together on <laughs> Zoom and Instagram and all the things. Um, but for those of you who don't know Elizabeth, she has been a mentor to me through her words for years. Um, her book, Real Learning, was the pivotal book that shaped our family's homeschool journey. Uh, her take up and read ministry of Bible studies has deeply impacted my spiritual life. I think I have all of them and have gone through all of them. Um, she is an author and co-author of so many books she's been writing for. Is it 30 years, 20 years? How long have you been writing? Your whole life. And I've read yeah. most of them had to write. And her blog. I have read Elizabeth's blog since since I started reading blogs. So ElizabethFoss.com. She has just so deeply impacted my life. And the best gift of 2020 has been getting to know her more through her, her words audibly. And we talk and we text and we've done so many Zoom calls together. Definitely. Such... Definitely one of the high spots in the last year. Yes. Sure. So good. I love you so much. So just the background of why we're here today. And the first thing I want to say is you know, the Bible says, before you talk about the speck in somebody else's eye, address the log in your own eye. And that's why we're here today, to address the log in my eye, because I For sure. um, I'm struggling with acedia. And towards the end of 2020, I've been thinking about it and kind of meditating about, on it a lot. And a week or so ago, I said to Peter, "Hun, I think I'm struggling with acedia. He's like, well, I know I am. I was like, really? We haven't talked about it. Let's talk about it. And um, it's just kind of been ruminating in me. And one of um, the best definitions of acedia I've ever heard came from you. And so that's why I invited you today to share with us about acedia. I had never heard of the term or what it meant until I think it was 2016. Peter and I both read this book called The Noonday Devil. Yes. That is, is, have you read this one too? You like this one too. Fabulous. Um, we had never heard of the term. So Peter just happened to find this book, I think on Amazon and ordered it. And then was like, "Honey, you have to read this too. Right. And um, it was just something we had never, no one had ever talked to us about it. We had no awareness of acedia up until that point. But since then, I would say we've both been um, pretty aware of it and pretty aware that we've struggled with it. And I think 2020, one of just the side effects for all of us is we're probably all on some level struggling with acedia. I think so. so. Can you take us back in time and chat with us about what this word means and where it came from? Because I'm very sure that many watching us today or who will watch the replay have never heard, you know, have been like me and never heard of this term right. either. So, um, so a lot of my like notes and thoughts came from that book. So um, just so that people understand, the book's called The Noonday Devil, Acedia, the Unnamed Evil of Our Times. Um, and it's, um, it's by Father Charles Nault. And I think the title is so great because he calls it the unnamed evil of our times. But then he takes you back to see that like, 
it's been here forever. Like it's, it's the un, it, you know, you think, okay, is it, is it, um, is it a 2020 phenomenon? And then you realize, yeah, no, it just has different manifestations in different places. So, um, so that the ancient Greek um, oh. translation kind of, of acedia, um, it translates to lack of care. They just, I just don't care. I'm just not concerned. It's not sloth. Um, and that's a, there's kind of an interesting morph kind of thing that happened. Um, it's a precursor to laziness, but laziness doesn't quite capture it. It's not quite lazy, especially since for some of us, um, acedia is manifested in busyness. Like, we're doing a lot of things. That's you know? me. It's that it's that, <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm I'm doing everything but the thing I should be doing. So I am busying myself with um, taking a Q tip to the little buttons in the blender and I'm, you know, I'm scrubbing this or I'm, you know, off doing whatever. I'm doing everything but the thing that, that is the thing that God's calling me to do, like the thing that really needs my attention. So so sloth doesn't catch it quite as well, but um, but what happened was there used to be eight vices. So um, they were gluttony, fornication, avarice, sadness, anger, vainglory, pride, and acedia. And um, over time, those changed. But um, but there was a monk called Evagrius, and he said that all eight of those were a threat to monasticism. And I think really they they were all they're all a threat to holiness right because we're not called to monasticism but we are all called to holiness right and and those eight things are a threat to our holiness um so um the monks called it the noonday devil because they spent time alternating between prayer and work all day long and around noon when the sun was the highest they began to lose their focus. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's how it became called the New Day Devil. I've been thinking so much about that, like in the last couple of weeks. Um, I live in the Northeast. It gets dark at 4.15. Um, one thing I've noticed about, um, about Connecticut when I visited here before we moved here was it is gray. Like all day, well, as soon as I said that, the sun came out. <laughs> but, but most of the time, it is gray here. And yet, I feel like that grayness yeah. is definitely oh, part of the acedia oh, problem of yeah. midwinter. So, you know, uh, devil maybe, but look out for lack of sunlight. Yes, absolutely. I have seen it in motherhood, not quite at noon, but like for me, it's the 2 p.m. devil. <laughs> like, you know, when you're home all day with your kids. I'm also homeschooling. I'm sure many watching know this, especially this year with all the virtual learning and kids home, where there's a point in the day where, uh, you just don't want to do math with your kids. You don't want to do Anything. homework or whatever. So I would rather, I could go clean the toilets or I could organize the spice cabinet or- Right, and that's also when people me into, the, into the perpetual scrolling, yes. you know? It's just yes. like- no, just, it's, like, it's, yeah. it's not intentional. You're not sitting there thinking, oh, I think I'll just waste half an hour just looking right. at other people's lives. Right. More, I just can't move right now. Yeah. I just can't do it. Um, but then the, the other part of the CDA is restlessness. Um, you know, it's, a, it's a, 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 a need to like run away to, to just this restlessness, which always, I mean, anytime somebody talks to me about restlessness, that brings to mind the St. Augustine quote about, um, about not being, not being, to, to being restless unless you're resting in God. And of yeah. course that is actually what a CD is. It's yeah. that untetheredness that got us. It's, um, so like oh. one of the, one of the five manifestations of acedia is um, instability, right? Interior instability. And we're not talking about like mental illness. We're talking about just uh, an, a, a, an interior, um, like shifting beneath your feet where you just kind of want to give up on the spiritual battle. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that the last year, the spiritual battles were intense, right? Yeah. Yes. And we're weary. And so yeah. this 
it's this restlessness, this wanting to just, oh my gosh, I just can't another mm -hmm. day. I just yep. can't do this another yep. time. Yep. Um, you know, and I think uh, the other thing about 2020, that one of the other, um, one of the other manifestations that, um, that they talked about is um, an exaggerated concern for your health um, or a fear that God won't provide essentials. And from mm -hmm. the very beginning of this pandemic, like, oh my gosh, toilet paper, right? Yes. And, and this fear of, oh, the supply chain is going to be cut right. off. We're not going to have this. We're not going to have right. that. And, um, and then this incredible, like, corporate fear for health. We're sitting here like sitting ducks, you know. We're going to be socially mm -hmm. socially isolated. Right. We're going to lose the sacraments, mm -hmm. and then we're going to throw all this other stuff in there. Like mm -hmm. it, it was just the perfect storm yep. for Cynthia. Yep. Somebody else asked what the five manifestations are. So interior instability, um, exaggerated concern for one's health, or a worry that God won't provide, um, an aversion to manual work or listlessness. And this is the, this is the mama one, I think. Like, th there's a part of me that when it starts to set in, like, I'm a really good angry cleaner, like, or stress cleaner. Um, like, I'm all about mood, you know, if I'm, if I'm angry, or if I'm stressed, like, just do all the things, control all the things you can, clean all the yeah. things you can. Yeah. But if I'm tired, like if I've had a bad kid night or um, I, I'm just like so tired, you're numb. Mm -hmm. That's that listlessness when we just, I mean, that's when like my screen time goes way up because I just, I don't even want to read. Like I don't want to engage my brain. I'm yep. just numb. And I've, right. I've talked to um, over the years, like, when my, I had a bunch of little kids, I remember um, the first time saying to my spiritual director, I really think that um, fatigue, tiredness is the near occasion of sin. Like, it's this slide, right? Yes. You're tired. Yeah. You eat the wrong thing. All right. You sit around all day. Yeah. You, like, all the things, right? And, and yeah. I think the last few years, the rise of reality television and how so many women are home watching i even i mean i love joanna Gaines. <laughs> I, I love her but even the whole fixer upper thing watching somebody else get a new house or a kitchen makeover in or, an hour you no know, the whole it's it's it can be a slide <laughs> into vice where you're just sitting there because it's too much to get up and do your own work so we're just gonna live vicariously through someone else who clearly has it all together you know, right. I think can be part of it. And it feeds Acedia so, so well. Like, it is a, the most efficient stoker of the Acedia fire. If Acedia could be a fire, and it's not. It's mm -hmm. too good. It's so, subtle. Yep. Um, so, so, interior instability, exaggerated concern for one's health or providence, um, Aversion to manual work, listlessness, that's three. Um, negligence in prayer. So um, I, I think that one of the ways that Acedia, like the noonday devil works his way in, is he gets us to stop, um, stop looking at our soul the way God looks at our soul. So, so that's what prayer can do for us. God, prayer can help us to examine ourselves, to examine our consciences, to see our souls the way God sees our souls. It's something that, you know, we should ask for, um, especially like right after communion, you know, he, he's in us, present, physical, help us to see what we need to see. And Acedia takes that away. We can't even bring ourselves to say the words. Um, and we can't, and then, and then from there, it's a very quick slide in not being able to do the thing. So not being able to do the work that God asks us to do. We can't say the prayers. We can't say the words. We can't do the work. Well, um, I found this year, Peter and I both talked about this, how because access to churches, sacraments, everything is so much more difficult that it's really easy to be like, well, we couldn't get to confession this week if we tried. Like, it'd be so hard to get the kids 
to confession and we have to stand in a line forever in a mask with all our children, you know, like how, how easy it is to make excuses. Um, and I think part and of that take is the the CBS people and we're right not going to fight for it. Yeah. 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 I think that's really true, but I, it's a vicious cycle because yeah. when you are suffering from a CDI, and that's the other thing, like, is it a sin or is it a suffering? And I think it's a both and, but when you're suffering from the CDI, um, you are so listless that you don't have the ability or you can't feel the ability to fight that. Right. And to get the things that you need. And I think that a lot of people lost sight, particularly in the spring, about how vulnerable that lack of access to the sacraments made us. Yes. You know, we we're sitting ducks. A lot of people walking around, not really walking around, like stumbling around their houses, um, in a very stressful, very new situation without the grace of the sacrament. Right. And, and, then, like, the, the dispensation um, kind of fed it a little bit because yes. you're like, well, they said we don't have right. to go. Right. And, and, and some priests were even saying, you know, it's for the greater good that you don't go. Mm -hmm. You know, like, this weird, but okay, that might even be true, but still, you are without the graces. Like, it, it, you're still suffering from, right. from, you know, not being short up. Right. And we need to know that. Um, and then the fifth one is um, a general state of discouragement. Like, and I think we've all been there. Like, yeah. so I think, I think we, some of us just keep cycling through to there. And, and that discouragement, that, um, that play against hope. Yes. That is so hard. Yeah. To, to, to live, um, to live day to day without hope, yes. that, that's where Isidia flourishes. Right. And I feel like that's where we all are right now. I feel like we set ourselves up poorly for success at the beginning of 2021 by putting so much of our focus and effort on how much the twinkle lights of the Christmas tree were gonna make us feel better, how the cozy fire and the stockings and everything were just going to kind of soothe our achy, weary souls. And I, this is weird, but I felt it on December 26, logging into Instagram and seeing so many people say, well, now what, you know, like, um, so I need a good word for the year and I need a good yeah. mission for next year. And I'm going to sign up for, you know, how many diets are starting January 4th and right. I need a new exercise program and I need to declutter. And this was one for me, January 20, I mean, December 26th. I'm like, okay, well I need to declutter everything. Cause clearly now we have new gifts in the house, like full program, you know, and then I had, you know, it's funny. We oh. talked about, you and I talked about, um, timing of the declutter yeah. and, um, and, and when we had that conversation, I was like, well, why would anybody do a declutter before Epiphany? Like, right. there's all this Christmas stuff here. And right. I promise you, yesterday, I've never done this. Yesterday, I was taking down our Christmas tree. Yeah. Because, and, and it was twofold. We have a very sick puppy. And the Christmas tree is, it sounds ridiculous. It really worked until the sick puppy. But the Christmas tree is like right in front literally in front of the door to get out to the backyard and like doing the run around to get the dog out and then the dog coming back in and wanting to eat the tree like it was just a hot mess but as I'm taking the tree down I'm thinking this is so not me but every bone in my body wants to just put it all away right right now like right. as if I could do that mm -hmm. and make everything just minimalize yep then I would somehow have a clear vision for whatever. Yeah. And, yeah. and not only that, that's, you know, that's, we talked about this earlier, like that's my manifestation. Mm -hmm. My manifestation is the, you know, right. And then, and then that usually ends up three days later with the. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. I think this is so important to talk about too, because we, when we are watching other people, which is what we do on a social media platform like this, and we're seeing someone who's very productive, very busy, very successful at all the things, and we're thinking, oh my goodness, I could just, 
never work as hard as her or as efficiently as her. And what you might not be seeing behind the scenes is the dysfunction of it. I, I know this is a dysfunction in me. I've had so many people say, oh, I can't believe it. Special so, needs baby so and you're doing all these things. And I say right back to them, don't compare to that because this is coping. This is right. me um, not able to just sit and deal and simmer with maybe all of the things I'm worried about. So it's easier to clean toilets or declutter something or, you know. <laughs> Yeah, no, I totally all the things. Do. So um, we have to be careful about that. It's not always the productivity can be a vice. Um, and I think it's very related to acedia in this topic. So people are asking, okay, well, what's the remedy? Yes. Um, first, does Instagram kick you off after half an hour? Do we have, how long do we have? I don't know. I've got a little bit. We might not be able to save more than half an hour. Okay, so let's, let's, I'm going to list them so that okay. they're in the save, and yep. then we can go back and talk about them. Okay. So five remedies according to the Desert Fathers. So we're going back to Evagrius. Um, tears, crying out that you need to be saved. That's one. Prayer and work, and, and that is one. So prayer and work together, and that, that, monk-ish balance of work and pray and pray and work and your work being prayer. Um, perseverance. Um, contradiction. So for every temptation of acedia, there is a scripture to contradict it. Um, and then memento mori. So remembering that it, it, basically humility remembering that we are here by the grace of God and the whole goal is to go back to God and everything in the middle is by his grace. So, so those are the five things and then we can kind of go back and spend some time, you know, well, talking let's, about them. let's talk about tears because I I'm seeing in the comments when you mentioned that so many people said, well, I could cry. I could use a good cry. But that's, that's a good thing. And to, to be able to do that in a prayerful way, is healing <laughs> and i think together with tears so so crying out that you need help that you can't do it alone like their tears themselves are cathartic um and I, I have a quote here and i think it's a vagrious but i am not 100 percent sure tears let us divide the soul and have one part offer consolation and the other receive consolation uh, so so that's that crying like by yourself crying mm -hmm. but I kind of think um and maybe this is where we're different from monks um I think that tears in company um is something all of us need this year like I think that it's very helpful to have a friend yeah. where you can just like sob <laughs> just really really cry yeah um somebody said i went to confession and all i could do was cry i wonder how many priests have heard confessions like that recently yeah. where and i honestly think that there's something very i don't know primal about that being your confession just mm -hmm. i can't do it i just can't and here i am and all i can do is weep yeah yep that's good all right, let's talk about prayer and work. And this is, um, this is Aura and Labor. This is St. Benedict, right? So both. So, I mean, yes, it's St. It's Benedict and that whole, you know, monkish foundation of um, there's an intentional um, plan for life, like a daily plan where you are balancing work and prayer and, and starting with prayer and working and coming back to prayer. The whole idea of monks who pray the liturgy of the hours, who pray all the hours in the liturgy of the hours. So they'll, they'll wake at, and pray and then they'll, they'll eat and work and pray and then just keep, you know, that, that balance. Um, but it, it, so the, the um, another great book. Oh boy, here we go. Discernment of spirits. So the idea that um, during periods when you're, it, it, he calls it Stanberg, and he calls it periods of consolation. So periods when you're feeling pretty good, and you um, and you're feeling like prayerfully connected, that you can make. Um, that you can somebody asked if this can be shared without insta 
and it can, and I will help make that happen. Um, so, so the idea that you can, um, you can sit down during times of consolation and make a plan, um, particularly a prayer, prayer plan. Like this is ideally how I would want it to look. And then in times of desolation, so times of acedia, hold yourself to the plan that you made in a time of consolation. Um, and it helps, I think, um, to share that plan with somebody, like with a, an accountability partner. Um, I know that um, for, for me, this, this works like even outside of plan of life plans. Like, um, like I shared the, the take up and read plans. I sat down with Michaela at the beginning of the year and, you know, this is how it's going to work. And, um, and boy, did we get thrown like all kinds of stuff. And, um, and there were several times where I was just super discouraged. And I said to her, okay, we're going to just change this. And she's like, actually, we're not. Because we're going to try to see how that consolation plan should not succumb to desolation. Wow, that's um, good. So I think that, you know, think about your dream date, Stephanie. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you're sitting in a in a quiet kind of collected way mm -hmm. and coming up with some concrete. And that doesn't mean that life doesn't change. Right. right. But it does mean that if you're in a period of desolation, right. You're both going to look at the plan you made when you were not. Right. And you're going to kind of hesitate and say, yeah, you know what? This might be not the best time to do this. Yeah. Yep. No. Yep. Um, the beauty, the beauty of this too, just to tag this is if you have, if you're doing this with a friend, the, or your spouse, the odds are you're not going to be in the same state at the same time. So if you're yeah. in a of consolation, your spouse or that friend mm -hmm. could very well Absolutely. be in the opposite state. And Absolutely. This beauty of a friendship and community and communing with each other. That's how God designed us to be able to that threefold cord to lift the other up. Cause we're, we're, most likely going to be in different stages when we're both in the same state it's either really good or if we're both in a state of desolation it's really really hard that's right. a really hard place to be um but a lot of times the other is going to be able to pick it you know just as Michaela was able to do for you to have, be the strong one to pick the other up and then you will be that for the other person too right and I also think that you know we can't understate the importance of having um, a spiritual plan of life, of yeah. committing to beginning the day with prayer, mm -hmm. ending the day with the examination of conscience. Are you going to say daily rosary? Are you going to get to adoration this week? When does confession happen? Like having those things um, be a plan and be a plan that's committed to paper and committed to somebody else. Um, that, that those can be kind of the bumpers um, where if you're, you know, throwing an errant ball, it'll, it'll bring you back a little bit. It'll steady the ship. So I, there's so many metaphors in there, whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. Like that can keep us on track when, when the noonday devil hits, you know, like when there is some spiritual warfare happening, trying to distract us from yep. where we want to go. Ultimately. Yep. yep. All right, the next one, perseverance. Well, <laughs> everybody should have just picked perseverance as their word of the year last year, right? <laughs> like, I mean, goodness. Um, I mean, perseverance. So Averius says, perseverance is the cure for acedia, along with the execution of all tasks with great attention and fear of God. Set a measure for yourself in every work and do not let up until you complete it. Have an everyday routine. Use that as your handrail when the tunnel grows dark. Don't let go of the handrail. Keep moving forward. Be faithful to your rule of life is your best defense. So we kind of touched on that. Yeah. Already. But, um, but the idea that you keep moving forward. And I think that it's a, it's a definite spiritual battle. Like the devil would like nothing more than to knock you off your prayer plan right and and for moms a lot of times that will happen in the person of a little person right and you'll have this grand intention to you know get up at a certain time and have this quiet time with your bible 
And then that next day, everybody's throwing up at exactly that right. time. Um, and so where's the handrail? Grab the handrail, you know? Right. You have to be there for your kids. That has to happen. Mm -hmm. um, and you wanted to have some Bible time. So can you, you know, put your earbuds in and uh, listen to the Bible on a podcast? Like, I don't know. I'm just yeah. throwing it yeah. out there. I'm just saying, come up with a plan right. and don't be thrown off the plan. Because right. as soon as you let yourself get thrown off the plan, then there's this vortex that sucks you in. Yep. So good. I love that um, visual of the handrail. That's so good. All right. Well, let's talk about contradiction. This is, this is the hope in all this, um, is that God always, he is so gracious with us and he always provides the way. He always provides the remedy um, so that we don't have to lose hope, even if we are struggling really deeply with the CDS. So what does contradiction mean? So it means that um, everybody, even Jesus in the desert, mm -hmm. needs a way to combat the hopelessness. Yeah. And this is where short aspirations... <laughs> This is where short aspirations are, are the gift that, um, that we can give ourselves, we, the gift of scripture that we can, that we can offer um, to ourselves. And my favorite one um, comes, we, we hear it in the Liturgy of the Hours, it's super short. Um, you see it in a couple of places, um, biblically. So Psalm 70, verse 1 is be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. So that's the RSV version of that. Psalm 69.2 in the Dewey Reign. So it, it's just one of those. Sounds better in a different one. Yeah. Right. Oh, God, come to my assistance. Oh, Lord, make haste to help me. And we hear that a lot in the Liturgy of the Hours. And mm -hmm. it is so short and so easy. Yep. Oh, God, come to my assistance. Oh, Lord, make haste to help me. That is the prayer of every mom all day, every day. Like that. That is all we need is that little bit. Or um, the, the ancient fathers, um, that simple prayer that Orthodox Christians pray all the time. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Like mm -hmm. there is so much there in that prayer. You're affirming God as the Lord of your life. Yep. Um, you're, you're affirming the incarnation. And I think um, we'll get maybe get to this, but St. Thomas Aquinas says that the incarnation is the remedy. So Christmas is the remedy for acedia. So Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, um, have mercy on me. That that cry out for mercy, that, that acknowledgement that God is the God of mercy, that acknowledgement that we need mercy, and then a sinner. You know, have mercy on me, a sinner. Mm -hmm. And and so much of how to battle out of this is to confront your own sin, mm -hmm. like to acknowledge that yeah. we are sinners in need of savior. Yeah. And so many people, I think, struggle against acedia without mm -hmm. surrendering to yes. mercy. Yes. And, and that's a fruitful, a fruitless struggle. It's not right. going to happen. Yep. Yep. All right. So let's talk about Memento Mori, and then we'll close with talking a little bit more about the incarnation. It's kind of the remedy for all this. So what's Memento Mori? So Memento Mori is the idea that, um, that remembering that ultimately we all die, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and you think, well, of course, we all know that we all die. But I think it's important to think about how we want to die well. And, and that doesn't mean, oh, we want to, you know, <clears throat> be so fortunate as to have a, a pleasant death, um, as much as it means that we want to spend our life um, getting to know God so well that when we die, it really is going home, you know, that, that your goal in life is to, to know heaven. Mm -hmm. so well here on earth that it's a seamless transition um and you can only do that um by being aware like truly aware um 
and truly acknowledge that um, death is the ultimate end to this self-centered sloth thing that is acedia. Like, that'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, um, so I think, I think Memento Mori is such a simple reminder to ourselves that, um, that, that there's more to life than what's here and what's now. And even when you're feeling that darkness start to envelop you and you're feeling kind of without hope, which is a terrible feeling, mm -hmm. um, there is always hope. And there, there, this is a small speck in time. And it seems so big yeah. and so hard to overcome. Mm -hmm. But in the light of eternity, it's incredibly small. But even in the light of most of our lifetimes, mm -hmm. you know, it's incredibly small. It's so interesting. I, um, January 29th was the 30th anniversary of like my last cancer treatment. And, um, and I said to Mike that morning, oh yeah, sick sick puppy we had a kid who needed a covid test um the house was like a christmas threw up everywhere you know and i said to him like if you had told me on january 29th 1990 that these were going to be my pressing frustrating concerns i would have been like let me have it you know <laughs> lay it on me i'm more than happy to have you know this, the, the eighth of my nine kids be sick and, and she didn't have COVID and you know, it, it was fine. And the dog will be fine eventually. A lot of dollars and a lot of struggle later. Um, but anyway, like the, my point is that moment in time in January, uh, in December of 1990 seemed huge and hard and crushing. Mm -hmm. And that moment now, seem huge and hard and crushing but if you look at them in isolation they're little blips right mm -hmm. yep yep all right well let's let's talk about saint thomas aquinas just to wrap this up and um to offer hope because there's always so much hope even in the struggle of acedia so what does thomas say so he says christmas is the hope um which is how, how um hang on somebody you know, any couples retreats are going to help with getting couples on the same page. That's, I'm tagging Stephanie there. Um, so Christmas is the hope because the incarnation is how God united humanity and divinity. And, and that's what we need to stir ourselves out of our restlessness. We need to rest in God. So now I just joined Aquinas and Augustine and it's a Christmas miracle. <laughs> But that distance between, you know, human nature and divine nature is overcome by Jesus. He bridges that. And, and that's what we need. We need that, that bridge between our tendencies to, um, to fall into this and um, our desire for holiness. Because really and truly, all of us want that. We all want holiness. But we get caught in the mire of the daily yeah. drudgery. Yeah. And we get pulled out into, um, into Acedia. And, and I, I, the one thing that pops into my head also, because a lot of people are talking about marriage, um, is this is absolutely not just a feminine thing at all. I mean, you started by saying, Peter said, oh, yeah, right. I'm, <laughs> you know, but it is very much. Mm -hmm. a a all of us struggle thing yeah well i'm so glad that we had this chance to talk about it because i feel even though it's a hard conversation there's so much hope in pulling it out of the closet and talking about it out in the open and saying you know even when i put on instagram that we were talking about this i can't tell you how many messages i got this week saying this is what I'm struggling with. I didn't even know. I couldn't put a name to it. And I, one, one girl said, you know, I sat in the parking lot of my church just saying, why? Why do I feel this way? And why is just everything kind of off? She's like, this is it. This is what's going on with me. And I think we need 
to be aware. It's the first part of, of winning a battle or conquering anything is to be aware that it exists and yeah. that we can be. Put a name to it. Yes, to put. And then, and then the, flip, the, 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 the corollary of that, if you put a name to it, you can talk about it. Right. Find somebody yes. to talk about it with. Yes. And for those of you who are married, your spouse might love this book. Like my husband brought this book to me. He loved this book. He was fascinated by the topic, by what the monks went through, just to read about what these men were struggling with. He really appreciated it so much. And so this is a topic that I think men are very interested in learning more about and um, will benefit them from being able to talk about it too. So... Well, this is good. I love how you said we need to rest in God. That's another word for all of us in 2021. Like, I know we all feel it anyway at the turn of a new calendar year that we have to do. We got to change. We got to change everything that we didn't like about ourselves or our situation in the past year. And it's such a huge temptation, I think, this year even more. But just pause for a hot minute and pray about this. Talk about this rest for a minute. You, if you're still on Christmas break, rest for a minute. Take this to prayer and see what God has for you. Because it might not be that he desires you to fix everything you don't like about yourself right now or your family or your house or whatever. He might just be asking you to rest and to persevere with the one thing. As Father Mike Schmidt says in his video about Acedia, the one thing, you got to focus on the one thing that God wants you to be doing and that's the remedy for Acedia. Do you have any last closing comments, Elizabeth, that you wanted to uh, end? People wanted to um, reiterate the, um, the name of the book. Sure. Do you want so to do that? I'm typing it in here, and I oh, don't good. want to pass well. But it's the Noonday Here's Devil, the, the Unnamed Evil of Our Times. There. And the, the last name is, is N-A-U-L-T, the author, Nault, yeah. N-A-U-L-T. Um, all right, I want to ask our, our viewers today to do two things. Two things I ask you. One is, this is for your benefit, y'all. Go follow Elizabeth Foss <laughs> on Instagram. She's at Elizabeth Foss. You will be blessed. I promise you will be blessed. So go follow her. The second thing is, I want to ask you to share this video with at least one person. I just... The reason that we did this this morning is I think Elizabeth and I both felt very strongly. We're all struggling with this. I did. I knew it wasn't just Peter and I that we're, we're hurting and we need answers. We need to talk about this. So I'm just going to ask you whether it's you're sharing it on your Instagram feed or you tag someone below in this video and just say, I'm thinking of you, but just share it at least with one friend that um, could be blessed by learning about Acedia. So that's it. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful first weekend of the new year. Elizabeth, thank you so much for taking this time. Oh, I'm so happy for the opportunity. It's always so nice to talk. Like, I don't even think I realize how much I need these things until I've done them. And I'm like, oh. Well, maybe, that, maybe we could talk more about doing more of these in 2021. Because I, I miss doing it. It was so much fun to do it last year in the spring. Yeah. Yeah. I think this, and you know, I think this format's good too. Let's yeah. get it done in half an hour. And, yeah. And, um, there's a way to save this to YouTube so we can. Okay. Good job. Have it. Yeah. Cause I have no idea. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll talk you through okay. it. So. All right. All right. Okay. God bless everyone. Have a wonderful bye. day. Say bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye, Becca. <laughs>